In single variable calculus, uh, we have this idea of the derivative being uh, the slope of the tangent line. Um, so if you have a graph of a function, uh, at a point you can uh, draw a tangent line that kind of kisses the curve at, at a single location. Um, and uh, this line somehow approximates the function, at least if you zoom in far enough. So if you zoom in far enough, any smooth curve will start to look more and more like a straight line. Uh, in multivariable calculus setting, uh, you don't have a curve, what you have is a surface. So uh, if you kind of zoom in on the surface, uh, it, it does get flatter and flatter uh, as you zoom in and it'll start to look more and more like a plane. Um, so we can have this idea um, of, uh, you have a graph of a function uh, which is a surface, and you pick a point and you try to approximate that surface at that one location by a tangent plane. Um, so uh, let me lay, this, uh, lay out this idea with an example um, and uh, we'll see. Okay, so I picked a function f of xy equals to x cubed times natural log of y. Uh, this graph to the right is not the actual graph of this function. I just draw a surface that I could, wh where I think I can draw a tangent plane to. So um, the graph is a little bit abstract. Don't, don't uh, compare it to the actual graph. And let's say I want a tangent plane uh, of this function f at a particular location, uh, one comma e comma one. So I wanna change it to blue. Uh, so that means that if I plug in one for X and E for Y, uh, one cubed times natural log of E, uh, natural log of E is equal to one. So uh, the Z, uh, Z coordinate will be one as well. So that's why I have a one comma E comma one, um, but the first two coordinates are the coordinates of the inputs. Um, okay, so, uh, how do I write down the equation of a, of a plane? Well, um, what we could do is uh, we could look at the partial derivatives. So uh, if we fix uh, y value, let's say, let's say this is a and b, and uh, we fix a y value at b and uh, change the x value then we draw a curve on the surface. Um, and that guy has a tangent line at that point. So some slope like that. And uh, the slope itself is given by the partial derivative uh, del f del x. Uh, similarly, I could uh, get the slope of the tangent line by fixing the, the x coordinate value and changing the y value a little bit. So maybe a tangent line going in y direction might look something like this. Um, and what we want is a plane that contains both of these lines. So something like that. And it's supposed to be tangent at that point. I hope that makes sense. So, so let's put this all, this idea together, right? Okay. Um, all right, so we have the function f. Uh, let's take the derivative with respect to x. Okay. Uh, and we could also take the derivative with respect to y. So derivative of natural log of y is just one over y. Okay. And uh, I wanna compute the, the slope here um, at one comma e. Um, so it, I'm just looking at the, the input values there. So if I plug in one for x and e for y into the derivative of x, I get three times one squared times natural log of e. Uh, natural log of e is equal to one, so I just get three. So it's slope is three going in x direction. 
Uh, in y direction, I get one cubed over e. So the slope is one over e going in y direction. Okay. Um, all right. So um, I'm, I'm going thinking back to the 3D geometry stuff. Um, so if I can write down these two vectors, that's that's the directional vector um, for these tangent lines, then I could take the cross product uh, of these two vectors that's sitting inside of the plane to get the normal vector for the plane. Okay, so uh, vector that's going in x direction. So let's see. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna step one unit in the x direction and zero units in y direction because we're fixing the y and moving in x direction. If we do that, uh, the slope at which the, the z value increases is at three. So one, zero, three is a vector uh, going in the x direction. So that, that would be this vector right here. Okay, uh, in a similar way, if we're fixing the x value, we're not traveling in that direction, and we're moving towards y value, uh, the z value increases with the slope one over e. That's what we computed. Um, so that's this vector here. Okay. So one, zero, three, and one, zero, one over e. And we can compute the cross product. Okay, um, let's see. I, I don't know if I gave myself enough room. Okay, so to get the i component, the x component, uh, let's see, we multiply zero times one over e, which is zero, and we subtract one times three, so negative three. To get the jth component, uh, I put a negative sign in front and also we get one times one over e minus zero times three. Okay. And to get the kth component, uh, I get one times one minus zero times zero. Okay. All right, so we get the vector negative three negative one over e comma one. Okay, um, so this is the general uh, equation of a plane uh, with a normal vector abc. So negative three, negative one over e and plus one um, are the coefficients and we multiply by x minus uh, a point that's included in the plane. So uh, we know that uh, one E one uh, is a point on the plane. So x minus one, y minus uh, E uh, plus z minus one equals to zero. Okay, um, so that's the equation of a tangent plane at that point. Okay, um, so what we did was specific to that example, but if you follow the same steps, uh, you can get this uh, general formula. So I, I just kind of brought the Z to the other side, uh, but basically, uh, what we get is the coefficient of x is always going to be the, the partial derivative with respect to x. Um, it was negative uh, in the previous page um, here, uh, but what I did was kind of bring these two terms to the other side for the just general formula. Um, okay. So uh, one times z minus z naught is equal to the derivative, partial derivative with respect to x times x minus x naught plus 
partial derivative with, with respect to y times y minus y naught. Okay. Um, so this is, so you don't, you don't have to do the cross product. It's, it's always gonna give you this answer. So um, this might be a much easier formula uh, to memorize um, or have in your notes uh, to use. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, if you wanna approximate the value z, uh, what you could do is you can just kind of bring z naught to the other side of the equation. And z naught is the same thing as f of x naught y naught. It's the output value of the tangent uh, point. Um, and then kind of use this formula to approximate the z value as long as x and y is really close to x naught and y naught. So if you zoom in, uh, the actual function value should be pretty close to this uh, tangent line value, tangent uh, plane value. So let's do an example. Um, with the example we just computed, uh, right? So uh, we found the tangent um, value at x equals one and y value uh, e. So 1.1 is close to one and 2.8 is close to E. E is like 2.718 uh, dot, dot, dot. So uh, it, it is pretty close to 2.8. Um, so this would be the, the actual value of the function itself. Uh, let me pull out a calculator. 1.1 cubed uh, times natural log of 2.8 is 1.3704234444. Okay, that's what the calculator gives me to uh, um, all the digits uh, available. Um, and then let me compare it to this, uh, the actual height of the tangent plane at that point. So this is the Zena value, that's, that was one. So one plus three times 1.1 1. 1 minus one plus uh, one over E times 2.8 minus E. I get 1.33 zero zero six two four three five which is all right i think <laughs> all right approximation um it was off by four hundredth um when you were approximating x and y value to about point one uh accuracy to point zero four um maybe it's not so bad right and, and this uh, approximation will get better and better uh, as you get closer and closer to the actual value. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's look at uh, the differential. Okay. So in single variable calculus, uh, you, you have a y value equal to some function. Uh, and then you can look at, you can compare the the infinitesimal change in x and y uh, by taking the derivative. Right? So we usually write dy over dx is equal to f prime of x. So the derivative of f with respect to x. But when you do integral calculus, you, you do this u substitution, right? So uh, instead of writing dy dx, uh, you write dy on one side and uh, or du and the uh, dx on the other side. So this this is what we usually call um, the differential. Uh, so in multivariable calculus setting, uh, the differential uh, looks like this. So the infinitesimal change in the output is given by the derivative with respect to x times the change in x plus derivative with respect to y times change in y. Um, and you might kind of see this formula looking at the equation of the, the tangent plane, right? Um, 
this guy right here at the top, right? Uh, just squint your eyes and the left-hand side is the change in z, z minus z naught. So z is the new value, z naught is the, the tangent point value times the derivative with respect to x times changing x plus derivative with respect to y times changing y value. And uh, if you change, if you look at the delta x or delta y and delta z and imagine them being small, uh, you might write it as a dx dy dz, um, and then you get you get this formula um, for uh, uh, the differential. So so uh, that's that's how you can kind of think about this um, tangent plane idea. Uh, it kind of explains how uh, the changing the three variables are connected. Uh, in fact, uh, if you see this formula once, um, knowing the single variable calculus case and two variable case, uh, you could probably guess the formula for three variable case, right? So, um, right, so dz might be fx dx plus fy dy plus if the, the third variable was w uh, partial derivative in that direction times dw and so on so you could you could do this for any number of um, variables uh, okay so um, an example so if if i'm given a function like this uh, and if i'm asked to compute the differential um, then I could just write dz is equal to the derivative of this guy with respect to x is 2x e to the 5y, then multiply by dx, plus the derivative of this guy with respect to y. So derivative of e to the 5y is e to the 5y times by chain rule, you multiply by 5, and you also put a dy there. Okay, um, try this one, right? Um, dz, uh, I have to use chain rule when I take derivative with respect to x. Then I, I'll get another y value here. So this whole thing is multiplied by dx. And to take the derivative with respect to y, I don't have to use product rule. So that would be the differential for uh, this uh, next function. Okay. All right, so um, I hope that makes sense. So, so this might be connected to uh, how uh, variable changes in multivariable um, integration setting. Um, so, so that's something we look forward to in the future. Uh, meanwhile, I think I'm gonna end the video here. So I'll see you guys later.